Our scripture this morning is um, Luke 24, verses 13 through 25, and it's from the New Revised Standard Version, and it's about the walk to Emmaus. Now, on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all of this, it is now the third day since all these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astonished him. They were at the tomb early this morning. And when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman, women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as, as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. And he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave to them. Then their eyes were open and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was walk, while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, "The Lord has risen indeed, and He has appeared to Simon." Then they told him what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of the Lord to the people of Lord, of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. As I shared, this is Sunday the 26th, and we are once again using our time to come together electronically as we have our virtual service. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all the ways that we are gathered this morning, whether it's on our phones or our computers, our laptops. Lord, we are thankful that you provide a way for us to still connect and fellowship with each other as we serve you. So, Lord, we thank you and we praise you. And I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart is acceptable in your sight, for you are my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. On this third Sunday of Easter, we are looking at Luke 24, verses 13 to 35. Normally, I would share how it is still Easter season, and even though the commercial world has moved on to their next big sale strategy, um, we are still in Easter. But this season has been different. Our current situation forces us to look at Easter and the resurrection in a new way. Yes, this is the third Sunday of Easter, but it is also the seventh Sunday of us being away from our building. On this seventh week, I pray that our eyes are open to the fact that it is not the building that defines our faith, 
but the church is inside of us. Church can happen anywhere, and it has. This Easter, gone were the crowds in the stores picking through dresses and suits and bonnets. Gone were the long lines in the salons and the barbershop. Gone were the guest lists and menus to feed a house full of people. Gone were the packed places of worship. And gone were the people selling Easter baskets and candy and bunnies and flowers on every corner. This virus has opened our eyes to the way that we have been living our lives. We are learning that we can survive without the must-haves. We can do things differently and still be the church. Because my brothers and sisters, the church is our frontline workers who risk their lives on our behalf. The church is our support systems who report to work without the proper equipment, but they go anyway. The church is our sisters and brothers who do the jobs that sustain our daily living, but we were too busy to notice them before now. The church is the teacher who sees our children differently than we do and commits themselves to finding ways to instruct them, even if they are disruptive. The church is leaving messages and calls and packages for those who are fighting this virus and for the families of those who have lost the fight. The church is donating to causes to meet our basic needs. The church is service. The church is leaving things on the shelves for someone else to purchase instead of hoarding. The church is the building that is a diverse community of people who realize that we are all in this together, regardless of our race, our religion, our gender, our education, and our economic level. The virus does not discriminate and neither should we. I do not believe that God gave us COVID-19 or that God has targeted certain people. I believe God is using this pandemic to open our eyes to understand that God created one earth and we are one people and we must learn to live as one. There is only one superpower and that superpower is God. This Easter season makes me appreciate the richness of the resurrection story, the events that led up to it and the events that followed it. Those stories impact the way I operate my personal faith. Having our movement restricted and living in a spirit of concern for our welfare is not the same as the restricted movement and concern after Jesus' crucifixion, but I do have a new understanding of what that might have been like. We will never be the same after this, ex this experience. Neither were the followers of Jesus who were alive during the resurrection. This pandemic makes us elevate ourselves to a different level. It makes us live differently and it makes us evaluate differently who and what is important. This morning's text from Luke happens in a later part of the same day as the resurrection. To fully appreciate the text, let us look at of what happened before the walk to Emmaus. That Thursday, Jesus had a supper with the disciples and he established the ritual of communion. And every time we partake of communion, we do it in remembrance of Jesus. The foot washing reminds us that we're not too good to serve others. Friday was a horrific day for Jesus' followers. Some watched him struggle to carry his cross through the street with his body beaten and bloodied and bruised. Some watched as he was nailed to the cross and some even watched as he took his last breath. They heard him utter words that shape our faith today. On Saturday, I can imagine that those who were around to hear Jesus speak and witness the things that happened that day had that image in their mind all day Saturday. And the people who did not witness this, I can imagine that they were told stories in detail about what happened. The disciples were afraid and they were sequestered behind closed doors because they didn't want the same fate from the Roman government. And on Sunday, Luke tells us in verses 1 through 13 of women, yes, the original frontline workers who put their fears aside and ventured out of their places to a burial site to take the spices that they had prepared. They were the first to witness the resurrection and the first to share the good news. Gospel accounts say different things about that morning. 
some say that Mary was the first to appear and God appeared through Jesus to her. But unfortunately, because of the status of women then and sometimes the status of women now, that credit was given to Simon to be the person who reported that Jesus was resurrected. But no matter what version you believe, early in the morning, three days after his crucifixion, Jesus' body was not in the tomb. Yes, he was resurrected. So this morning's text reads about two men who were walking along, who had heard the story. And as they walked, they talked about what happened earlier that day and the days that preceded that. The words from the cross may have been still lingering in their minds. The words from the story of the resurrection was still on their minds. And for me, the words from the cross still linger on my mind days after, weeks after we've had our Good Friday. And for a moment, I'd like to share those thoughts as if I was walking along with my friend. And I wanna share those thoughts as they unfold in light of this pandemic that we are experiencing right now. See, if I was walking with my friend and living during those times, and as we look at where we are now, I would talk to her about the essential workers who are tired. They drag their bodies to work, exposing their bodies and possibly their families to something that could endanger them. There are those who do not take this virus seriously and because of that, they are exposing people. And then there are the people who are being misled by our leaders. They are the ones who inadvertently have other people get infected and that virus doesn't care about gender or economic status or titles or street address. It just wants to find a host. So when those essential workers, the one that their loved one gets infected, it's heartbreaking when those who are careless realize that they exposed people and they were powerless against the virus, it's too late. Father, forgive them. My friend and I would be sharing as we walked along how Jesus was hung between two criminals and one of those criminals derided Jesus. And, and he, he was like the person in our lives who knows that they did something wrong but refused to apologize or refused to admit it. They attack others, they make excuses or they try to change the narrative as if they didn't say what they actually said or did what they actually did. But the other criminal rebuked the criminal who was deriding Jesus and he reminded him that they were guilty of what they did. And then he asked Jesus to remember him when Jesus came into his kingdom. There are a lot of lives lost because of arrogance and ignorance and we must seek wisdom and understanding. Fear God, not challenge God so that we will see paradise too. And as we walk, we may consider the mother and friends of Jesus as they watched him dying and felt helpless. There are families and friends who cannot be with their loved ones as they struggle to fight this virus. And I know that it is hard. When someone loses the battle against the disease, it is up to us to be the family and the friends of those who remain. They need us. We must call and donate and, and safely volunteer and stay home if we're not doing something essential. We must care for those who are still here. We have to be their mothers and their fathers, their brothers, their sisters, their relatives, and their friends. And I can imagine as my friend and I continue to walk, we reflect on how Jesus was hanging on the cross, listening to people make comments about him and his plight. And how at one point the pain got so intense that he cried out, there are people who still don't believe this virus is serious. And we hear them make comments as we go out for our essentials or listen to our family and friends who are essential workers. They may not get it until it's too late. From Jesus' cry, we learned that even the strongest believer may have that moment when they ask God, why me? Or they may ask, why my loved one? Or why do some recover and some do not? That, my brothers and sisters, is being human. There's a difference between questioning God for understanding and criticizing God because of circumstances. And I can imagine that we would acknowledge that Jesus was fulfilling the scriptures when he said, I thirst. This pandemic has me thirsting. I thirst for businesses that realize the bottom line must be people and not profit. I thirst for leaders who lead and do not lie to us or give us ridiculous advice. 
I thirst for a world that knows discrimination is wrong. I thirst for people who understand that the earth and the sky and the water and the vegetation is all we have. We don't get a do-over. And I feel that as we walk, we would connect with his words when he said, it is finished, and to my hands I commit my spirit. He knew that he had done what he came to do, and we ask ourselves, what about us? Are we living up to our promise, our purpose, on purpose? Are we using our God-given skills and gifts and talents to build better communities? Would we comment on how we look forward to the end of this pandemic without taking those things into mind? And, and I believe that my friend and I would pray that when this crisis is finished, that we will all treat God's creation better, all people, all animals, and the planet. That we hope we're finished with selfish attitudes. And, and I believe that we will talk about how we have watched people take their last breath and was comforted to know where they were going. People who are testing others' faith are missing the point. My friend and I could preach into our last breath, but the person must believe in their heart what they confess with their mouth. We cannot put it there for them. It must be planted in their spirit, and only God can do that. So in my mind, these are heavy thoughts as I face each day of this abnormal new normal. I can imagine how lost in thought those men were on Emmaus Road because I find myself lost in thought. And those events are fresh on my mind as I watch this pandemic unfold. There is evidence that Jesus did exactly what he was sent to do. But even in the midst of knowing that the things happened on Friday to him as he said they were going to happen and how he was going to raise and it would be rise from the dead and there would be an empty tomb. They were so confused because it was unrealistic to them what was happening. And as Jesus joined them on the walk, and then eventually he joined them as they sat and ate, and he broke red, bread with them. It was his actions that reminded them and opened their eyes to the truth that was right in front of them. I believe God is trying to open our eyes to the truth that is right in front of us. I look forward to the time when we can safely move around. I pray that this unique Easter season inspires our faith community to work positively together with our gifts and that God has given us to use in community. We cannot return to our old ways. We cannot go back to being a nation that we were before we were forced to sit and reflect. We cannot get our needs met and forget to be thankful because people are sacrificing themselves every day on our behalf. Every time we break bread, we must reflect on the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. And I feel we must be thankful for the people who risk their lives and lose their lives so that we can bring this virus under control. And like the men on the Mears Road, we must go and share the good news to a world that is scared and is dying and is trying to understand what is happening around us. And we have to share the good news that Jesus is alive and because Jesus is alive, there is hope. Yes, our eyes are open and I am thankful. Amen.